Jake Aaron at 632 on a Thursday. All new for you this morning. The 7 Eyewitness News I team is working to get answers from a local police department riddled with controversy. Last month, an investigation by the I team found years of alleged misconduct at the hands of Evans Police. Video of these encounters have gone viral because of what's been recorded. The town sued many times by taxpayers who say they were victims of that police misconduct. Those lawsuits resulted in monetary settlements, but for how much and who's on the hook here? As our I-Team Chief Investigator Charlie Specht explains, town officials are not being fully transparent when it comes to disclosing those settlements to the public. Yo. It was videos like this that first caused us to look into brutality allegations against the Evans Police Department. What the f but our reporting soon uncovered other incidents like this one from 2018, where two Evans police officers dragged an Evans man, who was not under arrest, to the ground. This incident and at least three others resulted in lawsuits and thousands of dollars worth of settlements paid for by taxpayers. But town officials are now stonewalling when it comes to disclosing the full amount of these settlements to the public. We have to know how much we're on the hook for every time a policeman beats somebody up or, or arrests them under false pretenses. Evans taxpayer Bob Catalano was eagerly awaiting the results of our August 7th FOIL request, which sought any and all records listing or describing monetary settlements or judgments paid by the town of Evans since 2000 relating to the Evans Police Department. The I-Team listed four specific cases in the years of the settlements. On September 11th, Deputy Town Clerk Lynn Wolf responded with a 2018 invoice from the Tokyo Marine Insurance Company, informing the town that the above reference policy has a $25,000 deductible applicable to the coverage under this claim. The deductible applies to loss payments only. Under the loss description category, the invoice reads, claimant is alleging civil rights violations. Police officer pushed her to the ground and handcuffed the claimant. The second one-page document provided by the town was an Evans Town Board resolution from April 29, 2015, in which all three town board members voted after an executive session to authorize the town attorney to offer the sum of up to $25,000, the deductible under the town's insurance policy, towards the settlement of the suit filed by the plaintiffs. That suit, filed in 2015 in federal court in Buffalo, contained allegations of harassment by a town police officer whose family member was involved in a bankruptcy dispute with the plaintiff. But they gave no information on at least two other payouts we listed, including the one from this video. Taxpayers like Catalano and others interviewed by the I-Team say the town should disclose not only the insurance deductible, but the full settlement amounts. I think all these things should be on, t on the table. I think sh they should all be known. But when whenever you or I or somebody else goes to ask the town of Evans what about it, they clam up. They don't tell nothing to nobody. Everything's a secret. Town Supervisor Mary Hustler did not respond to the I-Team's multiple requests for interviews to clear up the discrepancies. Uh, a $25,000 deductible uh, on one case, then $25,000 on the next case. How many more cases were there that they didn't tell you about? All right, now this issue is one Charlie's going to continue to look into. He's joining us live this morning via Zoom. Charlie, I think a lot of people are wondering what town officials are actually saying about these settlements. Katie, they're not really saying anything right now for both of these stories. The town supervisor uh, did not respond to our request for interviews, not even to say no comment, just completely ignored our request. But this is something that is important to taxpayers. Keep in mind, the town of Evans just a few years ago had to take a $1 million loan from Erie County just to make its payroll as recently as this past summer. It did not have enough money even to do something as basic as dredge out the Sturgeon Point Marina here. So this is money that the town could really use right now, and we will continue to keep our eye on it. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to continue asking those questions and trying to get that town supervisor to respond. Charlie, we appreciate you looking into, into this for taxpayers this morning. Thanks for joining us.